All right, let's talk about section 1.4, which is going to be other effective sampling methods. So in the last section, we talked about simple random sampling. And now we're going to add to the types of sampling that we, we know about. First, let's talk about stratified sampling. So a stratified sample is obtained by separating the population into non-overlapping groups called strata and then obtaining a simple random sample from each stratum. The individuals within each stratum should be homogeneous or similar in some way. So essentially what this is saying is that we're creating groups, people, or groups of individuals, and then we're going to take a sample out of each of those groups. So a couple of examples might be that we would divide people up uh, based on age. So maybe we're concerned with <clears throat> people that are under 20, between 20 and 40, and over 40. And then we, if we wanted a sample of 30 people in total, then we would take a sample of 10 from the group that's under 20, 10 from the group that's between 20 and 40, and then 10 from the group that's bigger than, that, uh, that are older than 40. Um, you can also separate between male and female, um, people with children, without children. You can separate into groups by number of children. Um, we could also sample, or we could also create different strata for financial information, things like that. So again, with a stratified sample, you're creating groups, and then you're going to take a couple, um, you're going to take a sampling out of each group. All right, let's talk about a systematic sample. So a systematic sample is obtained by selecting every Kth individual from the population. The first individual selected corresponds to a random number between 1 and K. Um, and a frame is useful but not necessary uh, for systematic sampling. So let's look um, first at some of the steps. So in the steps, we're going to first figure the determine the population size. And then we're going to figure out the desired sample size. To figure out what K is, we're going to take the population size and divide by the sample size. And that'll be K. And then you need to round down to the nearest integer. So that the rounding down part's important. And then you're going to randomly select a number between 1 and K. And that's going to be your first number. They're calling it P. But that'll be the first number you start with. And then you're going to add K to uh, whatever number that was to get the next person that you're going to sample. Um, so I know that sounds kind of confusing, but it's really not that bad. So in this picture up here, there's a population of 11. They started with number 2, and they're sampling every third person. So they started with 2, and then they're going to get number 5, and number 8, and then number 11. So they've ended up with a sample size of 4. Let's look at this example here. So the human resource department at a certain company wants to conduct a survey regarding worker morale. The department has an alphabetical list of all 4,502 employees at the company and wants to conduct a systematic sample. So this is just an example, but I want us to put a little bit more here so we can actually work through this. So let's say that we want a sample size Of 100. So that means that our little n is going to be 100. So that's the, that's the desired sample size. And then it's telling us here that we have 4,502 employees. So that's our population size. So to figure out k, that is big N over little n, or that 4502 over 100. So that's going to give us 45.02. And then we need to round down to the nearest uh, whole number, the nearest integer. So k is going to just be 45. And I realize that this 0 0.02 rounds down. But even if it had been 45.7, we would still round down to 45. So now we have our k. And then we need to pick a number between 1 and k to be our starting point. Now, often the directions will give you your starting number. 
So if your starting number is, say, 5, then that means we're going to pick the, fir the, the fifth person, and then we're going to start going by 45s. So we're going to pick the fifth person, and then we're going to pick the 50th person, and then the 95th person, and then the 140th person, and so on and so forth, um, where we're going through and we're picking every 45th person, starting with that number 5. So, and again, that's systematic sampling. Okay, let's talk about cluster sampling. So a cluster sample is obtained by selecting all individuals within a randomly selected collection or group of individuals. So this is where we're going to group people. Um, I could group a classroom based on what row people are sitting on. Um, I could group people on campus by which building they're in, things like that. But you're going to create groups of some sort. And then once you've created groups, you're going to randomly select the entire group. So you're going to randomly select groups and then all the people within that group. So cluster sampling is going to include all individuals from some groups. So that's a little bit different than the stratified sampling because remember stratified sampling you created groups and they had to have some characteristic. So again, separating by male and female, by age, by children, by income, etc. And then you're taking some individuals for stratified, and then cluster is just going to be groups, and they don't have to necessarily um, be separated out based on male or female, things like that. And then you're just going to pick all the individuals from some of those groups. So perhaps we are interested in employees at Kroger. Um, if we wanted to get an opinion from the Kroger employees, if we were doing cluster sampling, we would pick a couple of Kroger's and then talk to every employee at those couple of Kroger's or that group of Kroger's that we selected. Um, whereas again, stratified sampling, we would look at all of the Kroger's and select some people from all of the, the different stores. All right, and then a convenience sample. So this is a sample in which the individuals are easily obtained. Um, so this is actually fairly useless. Um, for instance, if we were concerned if people thought education was important, if we stood out front of Gwinnett Tech uh, or any other college and we interviewed the people or questioned the people or surveyed the people that were walking into that college, um, that'd be a very convenient way to get a nice sample. However, it's a convenient sample and likely if we're out front of a college or any place of higher education, people will see value in education. Um, so, do be concerned uh, with information gathered with convenient sampling. Alright, so let's look at a couple of different examples and figure out what kind of sampling was used. All right, so for A, to obtain the percentage of defects in a recent manufacturing batch, a quality control manager at Intel selects every eighth chip that comes off the assembly line, starting with the third until she obtains a sample of 140 chips. So she's starting with number three and then selecting every eight chips after that. So she'll be selecting number three and then number 11 and then number 19 and so on and so forth until getting 140 chips. So this is systematic. For B, a radio station asks its listeners to call in their opinion regarding the use of U.S. forces in peacekeeping missions. Well, this is going to just be whoever's listening to the radio and wants to call in and they're going to survey those people. So this is going to be a convenience sample. And again, remember, convenience samples are not usually very reliable. Um, the type of person that would want to call in, and then also the type of radio station this is, is going to have a lot to do with the type of person calling in. All right, for C, 
to determine customer opinion of their boarding policy, Southwest Airlines randomly selects 60 flights during a certain week and surveys all passengers on those flights. So they took the 60 flights and then they surveyed everybody on all 60 of those flights. So they created clusters uh, where they were surveying those clusters um, where each flight would have been a cluster that was selected. So again, whenever you're surveying everybody within a group, that's going to be a cluster sampling. For D, a school official divides the student population into five classes, freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors, and graduate students. The official takes a simple random sample from each class and asks the members' opinions regarding student services. So we've, they've divided into five different categories, which are homogenous, meaning they have something in common, each of these categories, and they're not overlapping. So they're going to then take a sample from each of these categories. So this is going to be stratified sampling. So stratified sampling because they're taking um, a random sample from each group. For E, a small town newspaper reporter wants to get local reaction to a controversial new film. She waits outside the theater after an afternoon show and starts with the second, asks every fifth patron leaving how much they liked the movie. So she starts with the second person and is then asking every fifth person leaving the movie. So again, this is going to be systematic. And for F, 24-Hour Fitness wants to administer a satisfaction survey to its current members. Using their membership roster, the club randomly selects 40 club members and asks them about their level of satisfaction with the club. Now, notice there's no other information here. They're not saying how they're obtaining those 40. They're not saying if it's from one particular um, time of day or anything else. So this is just going to be a simple random sample.